Hi everyone, welcome to our Figma Prototyping Basics Workshop. Uh, we're going to start off by walking through a little bit about what UI UX is and then dive into a quick Figma demo to show you how to make prototypes. So UI UX is a really growing field right now. So if you're thinking of getting into UX, hopefully this workshop will help you learn some of the basics and feel free to ask any questions along the way. So the three of us are leading this workshop tonight. Um, let's go ahead and introduce ourselves. Hi, uh, I'm Cheryl. I'm the director of UI UX at Half Davis and also creative director at Design Interactive. Nice to meet you guys. Uh, I'm Michelle. I'm director of design at Hack Davis and also co-president of that Design Interactive. Hi, everyone. I'm Ying. I'm director of brand design here at Hack Davis, and I'm also an outreach coordinator at Design Interactive. So the three of us have some sort of UX knowledge, whether it be in school or industry experience. So feel free to ask us any questions um, after this meeting as well. Um, if we don't, if we don't go over anything that during the workshop. Okay, so let's get started with the intro. So what is UI UX and what's the difference between these terms? UI is what makes, um, UI is user interface and it's what makes interfaces beautiful. So the look and feel of a site or a product is what UI is. UI is, and this is where visual branding and interaction design comes in. UX or user experience is what makes interfaces useful. So it is how um, things actually work. Usually UX identifies some sort of pain point or user need through interviewing, building personas, or testing the product. This is a great um, UX, UI UX meme. because um, obviously the UI of the cup is super cute and has great colors, but the UX um, sucks because it isn't usable and I don't want my eyes poked out every time I drink something. So it doesn't fulfill the goal of being a cup or something to drink out of. So really in UI UX, we're really countering the belief that most people and even design students think that design is about making things pretty because it's not in school. We'll, we think a lot about visuals and we forget the UX. How do we make design useful? What is human-centered design and why should we care about it? Human-centered design is a design framework that considers human perspectives when you're designing. This is related to UX because when I'm talking about it, um, this is why I'm talking about it. In UX, we're looking at human needs and perceptions when designing and we'll use this human-centered design framework. This is a process that is commonly used in human-centered design. In the inspiration phase, you'll learn directly from the people you're designing for as you immerse yourself in their lives and come to deeply understand their needs. In the ideation phase, you'll make sense of what you learned, identify opportunities for design and prototype possible solutions. And in the implementation phase, you'll bring your solution to life and eventually to the market. And you'll know that your solution will be successful because you kept the very people that you're looking to serve at the heart of your process. This is another design framework that people in the industry use to guide their process. They try to first learn who they're designing for to create good user experiences. You need to empathize with your audience and understand their behaviors. Um, this part of the process would include researching and identifying common pain points. After empathizing with your end user and identifying pain points, designers will define problems based on what their users need. Since you're also typically working in a business context, you'll also define what business goals you're hoping to accomplish, um, which might be increasing revenue or getting more people to use the product. Then designers will move into exploring different solutions. It's important to be intentional with why you're making decisions here because your goal is to help solve a problem. So you'll go back to what your data revealed about your users and incorporate those insights into your design. In order to see if your designs will work, we'll need some kind of representation of it, which might look like a sketch or a digital mock-up. In this process, we wanna make our ideas tangible and come to life. Now that we have something that we can get in front of 
real people, testing your ideas will determine if you actually solve your users' pain points. The feedback you get from the stage will help you refine your designs, and depending on your timeline, you may go through multiple rounds of testing. This seems like a linear checklist of things you need to do, but in reality, oftentimes your process changes and it's really messy in real life. You might revisit certain stages multiple times, you might need to redo multiple things, and maybe the solution you thought of didn't actually solve the user need. But at the core, you're solving a problem, ba um, a, a problem based on real data and making better experiences for people. Although there is no UI UX, path in the design major here at Davis, you can de definitely benefit from taking these classes on campus, like Design 16, where you can learn Adobe software, Design 112, which is UI UX design, and you can do a final UX project in that class, Design 116 and 40C to learn about human-centered design and experiences. And then here we also have some free design resources that you can use throughout any project. Um, so a good place to look for inspiration is Dribbble. Uh, they have a lot of really beautiful UI. Behance and Pinterest are also great places to look. Um, for learning more about UI UX, um, a lot of us read Medium articles. So you can search up anything from like, what is UX? What is UI? What is the design process? And there are tons of Medium articles that you can look through. Um, if you don't feel like reading, you can always go to YouTube, do the same thing. And there's a lot of people explaining uh, really well, like what exactly is like UX and different aspects of it. Uh, if you're interested in diving deeper into design thinking, uh, design podcasts are a really great place to start. Like I listen to a lot of Spotify podcasts. Google design has some, Envision design has some, um, like a, I think it's called Design Better. They have a lot of UX industry leaders talk about um, specific aspects of UX design. And then for mock-ups, so these are like, iPhone screens, laptop screens, uh, even packaging. You can look those up on Behance, like typing in free mockups or go to mockup world. So if you have a design, you can just literally paste it onto that mockup and it'll look like um, a nice finished product. If you're interested in finding UI UX jobs, obviously LinkedIn's a great place to look. Also Google search honestly works really well. Um, Google job search, they'll filter in jobs from LinkedIn, from Indeed, um, from all kinds of places. Cofolio, so that's specifically for like design interns or like new grad positions. Um, if you go to their jobs page, they have um, hand selected jobs for people to apply to. And then same thing for interns.design. If you're looking to use stock photos and illustrations, I love Unsplash, like I use it for everything. They have really, really nice free, royalty-free uh, stock photos. You can search up anything like portraits, nature, any type of photography, and you'll probably find something. Um, Undraw.co, they have really nice resource, uh, really nice illustrations um, that you can use. So it's kind of the same thing. You search up what kind of illustration you want. Maybe you want someone working on a computer or like someone using their phone, they have all those kind of illustrations. Blush.design, um, those are kind of like people illustrations. So pretty similar to Undraw, but it's more focused on people illustrations. As you might see, that's kind of a trend right now. Uh, if you're looking for color inspiration, Web Gradients has really pretty gradients and it also comes with uh, like the CSS code for it. So you can just plug it in. Coolers.co, they generate random color palettes for you. And Adobe Color, um, kind of similar to, they have a lot of different palettes that you can look from. If you're looking for fonts to use, Google Fonts has free fonts. I pretty much use that for all my projects because who doesn't love free fonts? Um, and then Adobe Type Kit, if you have an Adobe subscription, those, all those fonts come for free. And then Typespiration is a great place to look if you're looking to pair different fonts together. So like if you want a serif font with a sans serif font or like different styled 
styles put together, um, that's a great place to look for what kind of look and feel you want on your product. And then lastly, for prototyping, we'll be using Figma. It's, a fr it's free for all students, but there's also Envision and Sketch. Envision is free for like a couple projects. Sketch costs money and it's only available for Mac. Um, Envision's a lot, is like the most simple and most basic out of the three of them. Um, so it's really great for beginners, but we'll be going over Figma today. And then uh, these slides will be posted so you can get these links. Okay, yeah, so diving into the Figma workshop. Figma is basically like the Google Docs of design. You get to uh, work, collaborate live with other designers. Um, you get to comment on it. So it's really good for like sending it to developers or stakeholders, getting their feedback on your designs. Um, and it's very prevalent in the industry right now. Like a lot of startups, a lot of companies are using it for their design, their design systems. These are some examples like Airbnb, Dropbox, Slack, Zoom, a lot of companies use it. So Figma has really great prototyping features. Uh, so you can bring your ideas to life with animations. This way you can test your concepts earlier and more often. It's also great for just UI design. Um, and you can, within Figma, you can do your design, but also turn it into an interact interactive experience without any coding required. So you can kind of see what your project, your end project will look like without ever having to touch code. Figma has a really great um, open source community and they have a lot of plugins that you can use to make your designs, like uh, make your life a lot easier, make designing a lot more efficient. Um, so these are some of my most used plugins. Um, we'll use some of them during the demo, but going through them. So avatars, that's just like putting in profile pictures. So you don't have to do it manually, like searching up someone's profile picture or like a stock image and then copying and pasting and all that. Uh, feather icons and material design icons. Those are icons that you don't have to search up and download every single one. It's just automatically in Figma. Lorem Ipsum for filler text remove backgrounds for if you are copying images from the internet, you can remove that white background or any background. We mentioned Unsplash and Web Gradients, but they also have plugins for those too within Figma. Okay, so we will get started. Please wait while I open Figma. Okay, cool. So today we are designing Airbnb. Um, pretty simple UI. We'll just go over the basics and basic prototyping. Um, so if you, this is the homepage that you'll start with. You'll see here, if you press the plus, that's how you make a new file. And I can see all my recent past projects. Here is where you'll find the plugins, so Figma community. If you scroll through this, there's so many resources that you can use. So I would recommend like going through this and seeing what you can use within your project. Yeah, there's so many, and it's always really fun to scroll through because there's always new ones coming in. So going into this file, um, if you take a look at the UI, so we have our layers here. These are just screenshots of the Airbnb website that I took. Um, you'll have assets here. So these assets are things that we've already designed. And so it's everything in this file that you can reuse. And we'll go a little bit more into it later on. So layers and assets. And then you can also create multiple pages within your design. So for example, this could be like our sketches or in, uh, research and then maybe like your final prototype. So you can have multiple pages within this one project. Um, up here, you have your menu. You have your move tool. That's just to move around the screen. Uh, space bar to 
move your screen without touching anything. Up here you have frames. So you'll probably most likely be using frames when you're designing. So they have preset dimensions for pretty much everything. Well, no iPhone 12 yet, but like there's, um, we're, we're going to use iPhone 10. They have tablet sizes, desktop sizes, and even like social media sizes. You have your simple like shape features here, pen and pencil tool, text tool. Oh, that's the hand tool I was talking about. And then this is comment. So I can say like, this needs some work. And people can reply and all that. So it's just like Google Docs. And you can see that I'm collaborating with Ying and Cheryl right now. So they're on the doc. Lastly, you can share your prototype. Um, I'll show you how to share not this design file, but your end prototype later on. But you can also get your code if you want to embed it into a website or any project. Um, and then over here, you have your design tools. It'll show more once you like start a frame like that. But OK, let's get started with designing. So I'm going to show how to design this page. It's really simple. So I start off with a frame. I'm going to choose iPhone 10. Make sure to always name your layers so that you're not confused to why they're like 10 iPhone 11s. Um, I'm name this my home page. Um, OK, so how about let's make this nav bar first. So taking the rectangle tool or R, I'm just going to go on top of this so I can get the dimensions right. But like that. And I'm going to drag it into my frame. And then what I can do is go up to my align features here. So you can align things to the left, from the center, to the right, to the top, to the bottom. So I'm going to do a uh, bottom center. I'm going to change that color. So here we have like fill and stroke. Stroke is just like that outline around the box. Around the box. Um, so I'm, I'm going to change the fill. I can take this eyedropper tool and get the original color. Oh, it's just white though. And add a stroke around it. And select that color over here. Okay, now I have my box. I'm gonna get these icons, but like I said, I don't have to Google search icon. I can just use my Figma plugin. So what I would do is right click, go to plugins. These are all the plugins that I use, but I have something called feather icons. There's also material design icons, which I think is Google's icons, like their standard icons. Um, but feather icons is nice because it's like really cute. So I can do like, I can look up search and there's a search icon. I can search up heart and there's a heart icon. I'll just click it and it drops it into my file for me. Um, but we already went through and found those so that I don't have to search and drop them all in. So I'm just going to copy these over. Okay, so yes, okay, I don't need this one. I'm going to select all of these. Oh wait, that icon was, um, the red icon is the search one for where are you going? Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay thanks. I'll need this later. Okay, so I'll select all of these and use my align features. Oh. Uh, and distribute the horizontal spacing. But what I can also do is, so let's say they're unaligned. I can also do auto layout. Well, okay, sorry, align them first and then do auto layout. And now I can adjust the spacing in between all the items. So it looks something like that, a little more spacing. Align that to the center. 
And then within my auto layout, now if I double click into the icons, I can switch them around because the spacing is already defined. Okay, and then I'm gonna make this one red by double clicking into it, getting the eyedropper tool, selecting that color. Okay, I'm not gonna add the text because it's pretty self-explanatory. Just press T and then add all the text into there. Okay, let's make this, where is this? Okay, let's make this background over here. I'm gonna take my rectangle tool, draw that out, drop it in, align it, change it to black. And then I wanna put in that illustration. So taking this, going into here, putting it in and then resizing it. And I can add some rounded corners like it does over here. So all I have to do is drag this until it is how I want it. Oh, but I don't want these corners rounded. So I'm going to, you can edit them here, but see 10, 20. Okay, and then let me just put this here. Let me make this search bar. So rectangle, make it round, drag it here, center it, change it to white, add the icon. Center align that. Add, where are you going? And also center align that. Okay, and then lastly, we'll add this. Go here. Here, I'm going to change the line spacing. Change that to white. And align it. You'll see that there's these like red guides that snap to my assets within my design. I can also see how many pixels away everything is by holding option. So I can see that it's like 40 pixels away from the search bar. And then let's make this button. Align that. Change it to white. And explore nearby space. And I want that to go on top of my rectangle so I can see it. Select my text and the rectangle and center that. Okay. I also want to make sure that I'm grouping everything. So right now you see that there's so many different layers. I don't really know what I'm working with right now. So I'm gonna select all of these, uh, group them with Command G or right click and name that group. So that's my search bar. This is my background. That's just my text. And then this is my explore button.
Okay. Uh, Cheryl, do I need to make these? Oh. Uh, it's okay. I can drop in what we have from um, our assets, but well, if you want, you can make them into components, which are basically like um, elements that can be repeated really easily. But for us, we're just going to copy these over. Michelle, do you want to do it? Yeah. Okay. So let me copy what Cheryl already made over here into this. I'm just gonna keep what she has, but um, to get these images, what you can do is use the Unsplash plugin. So I'm going to select the rectangle and then hold Command and select the other one. Take my plugin and uh, run the Unsplash plugin. with nature images. Okay. Cool. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Um, I'm gonna be showing how to prototype this design. Um, so currently we have this homepage. We also made um, other assets. Um, oh wait, sorry, let me share my screen. Just screen share. Uh, could you, oh, thank you. All right, cool. So hi, Michelle. Um, so we're gonna be making this flow. So how this um, interaction works is that once you click on where are you going, this modal pops up from the bottom. And then let's say you click on South Lake Tahoe and then this um, instantly appears. And then if you click back, it um, like uh, pushes back this in this direction. So um, a little bit more about this side panel over here. If you click prototype, this gives you your prototype settings. Um, so for example, our background, when we click the play button, it'll be black. And we wanna make sure we select the proper device. So I believe we chose an iPhone 11. So I'm gonna keep it at iPhone 11. Um, another thing that's worthwhile to mention is this little tab, um, especially for hackathons. I think this is really important. Um, this basically tells you all the CSS for all the elements in your design. So for example, if I want to um, be able to code this really easily, you can just um, look over here and you can find like the width, the height, and you know, like the type of uh, radius it is, and also like the position on your board. So I think that'd be helpful, especially during hackathon. Um, but first, let's finish making the rest of our screens. So we have our homepage right now. Um, for our uh, next page, this one, uh, we're just going to have this modal pop up. And um, I'm going to do exactly what Michelle did with the plugin. So I'm going to select all of these icons, double click, or not double click, sorry, I meant right click. And then once you go to plugins, you can um, go to, I think it was Unsplash. And then we'll wait for that to run. And you can see, since we're on inspect on the side, you can see all the CSS for it. But let's click on nature. And this will just randomly generate stock images um, from Unsplash. And it's taking a while because we have a lot of boxes to fill. Wait, Cheryl, um, I forgot to explain components on the third screen. So oh, yeah, sure. let, me, let me reshare and do that. Take my screen. These uh, images are taking a while to load. Okay. So going back. So another thing within Figma is components. So components are reusable assets that um, you can, so you can change like your master component and all your child components will reflect those changes. So for example, uh, I already pre-made this, but I have these listings over here. I'm going to copy that since the one over there is my master component. So let's say, okay, so I have this. So I just clicked, um, 
well, this icon right here, this diamond icon, that's how you make it into a component. And so you'll see that if I edit this text, let's say I wanted to say something else, it'll reflect those changes in all my other components. Um, let's see what that looks like with a lot more. Oops. And copy that over and then command D to copy that action. Let's say I want the heart to be red instead. Now you'll see that all my components have changed. So I always, you always want to edit your master component in order to do that. And so you don't want to put your master component within your working design. Uh, we like to keep it on a separate page where all your components will be hosted. And then I think with the inspect tool too, like if you have a component, it'll, your reusable assets will be connected to the code. Um, let me just drop in these for sure to use. And then copy this over again. So some example of components that you can use are for the navigation bar, because your navigation bar is going to be consistent across your whole product. Um, so I'm gonna turn this into a component. So let me drag this over to my components file, uh, make that into a component, name that to my navigation, and so navigation. Okay, nav bar. And then now if I want to reuse that, I can go into assets and just plop that in on my file and align that. And then same with over here. Align those. So now you'll see if I make any changes to this nav bar, like I move this Airbnb logo over that will reflect across all my components. Actually, I just... Okay. Cheryl, you can take over from here. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Um, and I think it's also important to mention that uh, we're using a components sheet because if we just made our components in our design, um, let's say we made this one our master component, if we wanted to turn this um, little magnifying glass into pink, it would apply to all of its instances, which is why it's always a good practice to have a specific um, artboard for your components um, in particular. Okay, cool. So now we're going to start prototyping and um, we made sure to set our device settings over here. And then um, once you are in prototyping mode, you can see when you hover over different elements, this little uh, circle appears. And then once you hover over that circle, it turns into a plus sign. So what this interaction is going to look like is we're going to click on where are you going? This modal pops up from the bottom. And uh, if you click on South Lake Tahoe, it takes you to this page, or honestly, like any of these will take you to a similar page. And uh, once you click back, it'll slide back. So I'm going to click on our first um, button that we want interaction to appear on. And if you pick up this node, it can go to like any artboard and it'll snap into place. So we're going to have this move to modal. And after you release the arrow, these interaction details appear. And 
So currently this is an on tap, but let's say for example, you want to like imitate a horizontal scroll, you can do an on drag. Um, if you want like hover effects, you can do while hovering, uh, similarly while pressing uh, keypad and even like other commands like mouse enter, mouse leave, et cetera. So this is gonna be a simple on tap. This is going to actually open an overlay instead of navigating to, um, and then this is the overlay is going to be aligned to the bottom center. Um, we can also uh, select like close uh, when clicking outside um, or also like adding a background. Um, I'm just gonna check those. I think that might be helpful having, actually I don't think it would be helpful since our background is already black. So I'm gonna remove that. But close when clicking outside, I think might be helpful. And then the animation would be a move in. Um, so how animation works on Figma is that like, it's kind of like Google Slides when you're making transitions and um, you can preview the animation by hovering over this preview at the bottom. You can also select other types, but I think for um, modals or overlays, you can only use move in, which makes sense. Let's have it move up like this. So you can click on these um, to symbolize which direction you want your second artboard to come in from, and then you can hover over the preview to see what it looks like. So after that, we wanna make sure that uh, we have our play button on the page that we want the interactions to start at. And then I'm gonna press this play button at the very top. And then this takes you into the um, preview of the prototype. So there we go, cool, everything's loaded. So now if I click on where are you going, the modal will just pop up in the bottom. And since that was the only interaction that we made, um, that's the design, that's the prototype so far, you can play, press R to restart. Um, but that's what we have so far. So we wanna make it so if we click on South Lake Tahoe, it'll take us to the next page. And let's also make, when you click back, the overlay will close. Let me do that real quick. So if I press this Chevron, um, it'll just go, oops, it'll just go back. Um, let me press R to restart. Where are you going? Uh, never mind. Oops, sorry, that's a small touch target. Okay, well, the interaction is there, but the touch target is too small. Okay, yeah, that was a fail. <laughs> um, we can also, I just wanna demonstrate how to go back. So I'm gonna have that as well. Um, now, if you click, where are you going? Okay, <laughs> All right, interesting. Um, I think it's because the touch target was too small, but that's okay, let's just move on. Um, once you click on South Lake Tahoe, this group, it'll take you to this next artboard. So we're gonna do the same thing and we're gonna grab this node and then have it move to, um, let's name this, uh, press command R to rename it, South Lake Tahoe and have this move to South Lake Tahoe. And this would be, in the actual experience, it's an instant animation, but we're just gonna have it dissolve because I think transitions are fun. You can also like select some settings for how the animation speed will um, progress and the time. And then let's see, everything looks right. Let's try this out. Yes, press R to restart. Where are you going? I'm going to South Lake Tahoe. Okay, and the next artboard comes up. So now I want to be able to click um, this group to bring us back uh, to our homepage. And um, just to make things easier, I'm gonna take these and group them together so that the touch target area is bigger. Um, so what we did here wouldn't happen again. Uh, Cheryl, for that, where are you going on the modal? Mm -hmm. I dragged it to, instead of back, go to close overlay. So if you click on it, like click uh, right now on the design, it, uh, well, it should work at the, yeah. There we okay. go. Yeah, I think it's just because the chevron is, the pixels are too small. So that's another thing to consider when you're designing accessibility. Your touch target should be at least 40 pixels wide and 40 pixels tall um, in order to be accessibility guidelines. Um, so then we're gonna continue our prototype. So once we move here, we wanna be able to click on this little um, arrow to go back to our homepage. 
Um, so let me demonstrate really quickly. If we want this to go back to home, we can do a, an animation like with push, push this way. I think this would be the right animation for it. Or it could be slide, slide would work too. I think I'm gonna do a push though in this direction. No, in the other direction. Wait, move out? Uh, the first one's right. Push in this direction? Yes, yeah. Okay, well, we'll try it out. <laughs> um, I'm actually gonna put my arrow on this artboard. So then our interactions will start here first. Oh, sorry guys. <laughs> so we're gonna press, oh cool, that worked. So let's restart. Um, it just pushes back that way. But if you notice the bottom navigation, um, it also moves with it. And um, I kind of want to have it so that this stays static as the interactions are happening. So this would stay still. Um, and we can do that with Smart Animate. Um, I haven't tried that yet, but let's see if we can make it work. So how Smart Animate works is that it recognizes the layers in your design and it only animates the layers that have changed. So yeah, it only applies the um, animation to layers that have changed. But with prototyping on Figma, there's an option um, for your prototype to smart animate matching layers. So I'm going to assume that since these are the same, they won't change. Actually, let's just see what that would look like right now, just to see if I have to change anything. Let's smart animate matching layers. And oh, cool, that worked. That's exactly what I wanted. Uh, so as you can see, because we selected Smart Animate and this component stayed the same, um, whereas the rest of the design had different elements, uh, once we pressed back, this stayed static and the rest of it changed. So let me walk through the entire experience so far. Um, we're gonna press, we're gonna move our play button to our home and then press play. Um, we're gonna start with, where are you going? Uh, we're gonna go to South Lake Tahoe. And um, eh, just kidding, never mind. And then we go back. Yeah, so that is our prototype. Um, Cheryl, can you do scrolling too on the South Lake Tahoe page? Yes, let's imitate scrolling here. So we want to um, extend this artboard longer if we want to show more content. So as you can see right now, this kind of extends off the page. Uh, let's move to design because we're not prototyping just yet. Um, but currently, right now, if I extend this artboard, um, as you can see, some things are stretching and some things um, are not sticking to the bottom. So what I like to do is select all of the elements um, inside this artboard. And I just like to make sure that everything is aligned to the, or is constrained to the top and to the left. Uh, that way, if I want to resize this artboard, let's say I'm adjusting to different viewport sizes, um, everything will stay as is instead of scaling with me. So right now, if I scale it larger this way, this bottom navigation uh, kind of stays inside the design, which I don't want because it could be distracting. So I'm just gonna press fix position while scrolling. Um, and this is important during prototyping because it'll keep this at the bottom of your viewport. So, oh wait, also, sorry, I also meant to constrain it to the bottom um, because when you resize, this, um, it'll follow you if you want to uh, extend the scroll. So let's say that you have a few more location options. So I'm pressing option and dragging to duplicate this. And um, we made sure that this was fixed position when scrolling. So if I want to prototype from this screen, let's see what that would look like. So I can drag to imitate scrolling or I can use um, my uh, mouse to scroll. But as you can see, this will stay static and the rest of the design will move. Oh, um, should I also demonstrate horizontal scrolling? Okay, cool. Uh, next, we're also gonna show uh, horizontal scrolling. So this entire uh, section, you can kind of swipe to see 
other location options. And um, Michelle put it in a group, which is going to be really helpful when we're adjusting the screen. So we're gonna use the prototyping on drag. So I'm gonna take this entire artboard and I'm actually gonna move all of these so it won't be in the way. Um, I'm gonna duplicate this by pressing option, now I'm gonna design first, uh, option and uh, hold. I'm gonna drag it over. So you can think of prototyping in a way that's like kind of like it's animation. So this is how I want the screen to look like in the beginning and, or how you want the prototype to look like in the beginning. And then at the end, you wanna be able to scroll in the horizontally uh, to the left. So this is your beginning and then this is your end. So I'm gonna move all of these over and I'm pressing shift to make sure that everything stays aligned properly. And um, using my guidelines, I'm just gonna make sure everything's aligned. And I think this should work. So let's click on this section that we want the on drag to work on, go to prototype and have this section move to here. This is kind of confusing. Let me scoot this over. Okay, I hope that isn't too wide. But so once you tap on this section, it'll move to here. And then similarly, or oh, I should, oh, sorry guys. This will be an on drag and um, navigate to South Lake Tahoe. And then it should be smart animate, I believe. And um, let me see how that looks like first. It's always good to keep checking your prototype. Yeah, okay, so you can move it over. Cool, and we want it to be able to go in the other direction too. So I'm gonna do the same thing and take um, the same component and, or the same part of the design on the other screen and move it back to our starting screen. And this would be also an on drag. Um, let's keep it at smart animate because that's what seemed to work last time. Um, and then let's test this design. Press R to restart. So once you do a horizontal scroll this way, you can also do a horizontal scroll back, also a vertical scroll while this is fixed. So yeah. Michelle, do you have anything else to add? Um, so can you go into the preview? Yes. Yeah, so now you can share this prototype um, by clicking share your prototype and you can get a link. So they only see this prototype with the mobile screen and everything. Uh, they don't see your design files, which could be messy. And so, um, yeah, it'll show all the hotspots um, and you can ask people to interact with your prototype. You can also download, I think, an app for Figma and you can view this on your phone itself too and prototype it or like view your mockup that way. Um, yeah, I think that's it. But uh, we can share our Figma file so you can see how we configured everything and we'll also be posting our slides too. Uh, if you have any questions, you can drop it in the chat or reach out to any of us. Thank you.